Hi, I'm Dr. Latcher from Spring Hill Equine and the podcast Straight from the Horse Doctor's Mouth. Today we're going to talk about how to keep your horse healthy. I'm going to start real quick with a shout out to our patrons. Thank you guys for supporting all that we do. It helps us put more educational information out there to make the world a better place for horses. So thank you. Uh, so let's start with a good vaccine program and how that is actually the basis of keeping your horse healthy. Having a great relationship with your veterinarian, which we harp on all the time, allows you and your veterinarian to have a talk about what vaccines are important. For every horse in North America, they should get Eastern and Western encephalitis, tetanus, West Nile, and rabies. Those are the things that even if your horse never leaves your property, they can come over the fence and get them. From there, it's risk-based is what we say. And one of the reasons that we look at risk is rhino and influenza are common viruses that are seen at horse shows. These things travel massive distances, especially influenza. Rhino, not so much, but influenza can travel 75 yards on a breeze. That is a really large distance. When you're looking at show facilities, you've got horses in tents or barns, you know, they're in really close proximity to one another. If it's winter, uh, especially in colder climates, you're showing indoors, everybody's sharing an airspace. It's very easy to very quickly spread influenza throughout that facility. Rhino, rhino has a lot of name, rhino pneumonitis, equine herpes virus, uh, equine degenerative mylo, mylo, no, sorry, equine herpes myeloencephalopathy. It's got a lot of names. Anyway, that one can't travel as far. But if you think about, you know, we're, we're looking at like 15, 20 feet there. But if you think about the average horse show, how often are you within 15 to 20 feet of a horse you don't know? That's why vaccines become incredibly important here and making sure that your horse has the vaccinations on board that they need to protect them from exposure to these viruses. There's no way to take a horse that goes places, especially to horse shows or competitions of any sort, and 1000% isolate them from respiratory viruses and bacteria. But you can, through a good vaccination program, minimize the risk to their long-term health. Along with vaccines, nutrition is a huge player in long-term health. And the reason it is, is because if they have the nutrients they need to have all of the things ready to go in their body, then they're better able to fight off bacteria and viruses as they come at them. That is not to say that you should supplement with immune boosting supplements. If you listen to most of what we say, we're quite anti-supplement. There is no such thing as a supplement that you can give to a horse that will make their immune system function better. What you can do is provide them really high quality nutrition with a forage based diet where the amount of hay and the quality of the hay you feed forms the base of your diet and then you add concentrate on top of that to make up for any deficiencies. That will set your horse up for immune system success. For the most part, when we're talking about how to keep your horse healthy, there's certainly the, the vaccine program, right, for the, the basic ones. But much like children in daycare, it's the respiratory bugs that create that downtime and training. So for those, we're looking at rhinopneumonitis, influenza, strangles, uh, and then there's a bunch of other viruses kind of like the human cold virus. There's about 8 million versions of the human cold virus. There's about 8 million versions of the equine cold virus. And we don't vaccinate for all of those. It's just not practical. Most horses who get one of those viruses will have a fever for about 24 hours and then off they go. So making a vaccine for each one of those just isn't really viable essentially. However, most of those viruses, just like in humans, travel short distances or are on surfaces. So when you are traveling with your horse, being aware of how close you are to other horses and trying to maximize that distance. Most of these viruses travel about 15 to 20 feet in the air, many even smaller distances. Influenza, as I mentioned, is the big one that can fly long distances. So a good vaccine program for that one is essential. But 
There are also viruses that your horse is going to pick up by touching things that other horses touched. The big one here is strangles. It's actually a bacteria. But strangles requires moisture, basically. The best way to spread strangles is by sharing water sources. So making sure that when you're at a competition of any sort, your horse is only drinking out of water buckets that you brought with you and water that you provide them. And the reason I say it like that is one of the best ways to spread respiratory things from horse to horse to horse is with the end of a hose. When you go from one stall to the other, you dunk this hose into the bucket, the tip gets wet, all of that stuff settles right here. You walk to the next stall, you dunk the hose in the bucket at the next stall. You have now spread respiratory bugs from one horse to the next. So making sure that you have control over how the water was placed in the bucket. I always run a hose uh, for a moment first and then hold it above my water bucket so that it's never touching water. You'll go a long way again to minimizing the exposure to respiratory bugs elsewhere. Having good airflow through your horse's stall at competitions, if all possible, is also a great way to keep those bugs moving through the environment. They need airflow, but they prefer a nice gentle breeze, not the, the sort of velocity that comes from a fan, even a, a box fan. So, you know, any, any type of airflow helps to move things through and makes it harder for them to settle in your horse's nasal passages. Do you know the difference between vaccines you get from your veterinarian and vaccines you get from anywhere else? There is a difference. Vaccines are incredibly fragile and require constant temperature management to go from the manufacturer to your horse and be successful. The other big difference is that as your veterinarian, we can examine them and make sure your horse is in a good place to receive vaccines. If you or your horse are ill, not feeling quite right, something is a little off, it may very well be that we give that vaccine and it doesn't work like it's supposed to. So we can ensure that your horse is healthy enough to receive the vaccine and respond appropriately. And because of that, the companies who make these vaccines actually guarantee that if your veterinarian gives the vaccine, it will work. And if it doesn't, they will help pay for subsequent care. Let's look at this as far as, uh, you know, kind of how to keep horses healthy set up. This is our farm. That's why my picture's right there. That is Google Maps telling you that I'm located at home. So we have the driveway coming in which is 25 feet across. If we want to minimize the spread of flu in particular, this has to be at least 50 feet and should probably be 100. So we would consider these pastures right here one location as far as disease management. These pastures back here, all three of them, would be another one because they all share fence lines close enough, even this one right here and this one, that's not very far. So they share fence lines close enough to share diseases. Uh, so when you use a property like this, your goal would be that you have your show horses or young horses in one place and your non-show horses, pregnant horses in particular, in another place and never the twain shall meet. So you do not have them touching or coming within 100 feet of each other at any point in time. You can see the, the barn is in the middle of this, the way I have the property set up. And that means that if I had pregnant mares, they should stay back here and not come into the barn when show horses are in the barn. Uh, again, respiratory viruses, super easy to spread, in particular influenza. Influenza just loves, loves, loves to, to spread all over the place. So that one is, if you control for that one, you've controlled for everything else, basically. The one flaw in this plan is that this is my riding area. So obviously the show horses get ridden here. And if I have non-show horses here and they're hanging out on the fence line, I can spread disease. It is a little bit less likely just because 
they they don't tend to hang out on the fence line first of all but also you know the amount of time spent here with me and my two horses is is minimal compared to you know kind of hanging out all day long together so it was sort of the compromise i had to make with the way the property was set up but otherwise it's an easy property to keep non-show horses away from show horses let's talk about this farm for a second because it has a spectacular setup to keep things separated so we have a driveway coming down like this and then we have a large barn right here we've got paddocks on either side and this driveway basically divides the property in half over here hard to see through the trees but is another separate barn so this place was actually designed for an owner who kept their horses here and then in the winter they would allow people to come down and stay for the winter and their horses would go in this barn and the setup actually works quite well in terms of you've got more than 50 feet between these two properties or you've got more than 50 feet between these two barns so that works really really well and it is very easy to say stay on this side of the driveway or this side of the driveway the one thing I would adjust is uh, the paddocks that are along this fence line. I would have taken them down this way so that they weren't you know, as close to each other with turnout. That can be managed a bit by saying horses are either in these paddocks or these paddocks, but never both. Uh, also, you have a lot of room kind of on this side to add paddocks as well that are not on the side. The other thing that you can do here is you can actually set it up such that both barns can use this is a covered arena uh, can potentially use a covered arena you would just have time so you would say you know like okay we're using it in the morning you guys get it in the afternoon and that would allow everyone to use the facilities that are there without having disease spread between the two barns one thing that should be obvious based on our discussion of how this property is set up for example for two people to have training facilities going on is that horse shows are not set up correctly <laughs> and i don't know that you can set up a horse show correctly it's just not not a thing that can be done but if you think about how the average horse show is set up you'll see that it is set up the exact opposite of this where you have lots of horses sharing tight quarters for warm-up and showing you have barns shared uh, you know, particularly up north, you have one airspace in those barns where you have them, you know, connected, especially in the winter. So, you know, sort of the exact opposite of what we want to do. So that that's why it's really important to have a great relationship with your veterinarian and set up a good disease control program, a.k.a. vaccinations. OK, so we talked about a good vaccine program with that veterinarian you've got a great relationship with. Uh, some nutrition basics. We've got a lot of nutrition talk, so if you want more on that, go find all those. And then we talked a little bit about property design so that when you're at home, you can try to keep your horses as healthy as possible. As always, if you've got questions, drop them down below and we'll try to get them answered as fast as we can. And a shout out to our patrons who let us do what we do. Without you guys, we can't do any of it.